Let's take a look at our first question. This question will cover accounts payable. On July 1st, Baby Bear Inc. purchased $60,000 of inventory, terms 210 net 30, FOB shipping point, and uses the growth method of accounting for purchase discounts. Baby Bear Inc. paid freight costs of $1,200. On July 3rd, Baby Bear Inc. returned damaged goods and received a credit of $6,000. On July 10th, Baby Bear paid for the goods. Prepare all necessary journal entries, assuming a periodic inventory system and assuming a perpetual inventory system. This question is interesting because we did cover accounts payable in chapter 13, but how to record journal entries using a periodic and a perpetual inventory system was covered in financial accounting part two. This is a good example of why financial accounting too is challenging. It tends to pull information from the pre prerequisite to this course, financial accounting one throughout the questions. I have posted a video as a recap as to how to account for inventory that you might wanna take a look at before we go through the journal entries for this question. So let's get started. So how are we going to record these journal entries using the two different accounting systems? Well, let's make it easy on ourselves and let's create and let's list out the um, let's list out the different journal entries according to each of the two options. So let me just grab a pen here. OK. OK, so here we're going to have periodic. And here we're going to have perpetual. OK, so the first entry that we need to record, it was the transaction was on July 1st. And what happened? So Baby Bear purchased $60,000 of inventory. And you can see we have discount terms here. But it does say that they use the gross method of accounting for purchase discounts. And what that means is that we'll record the discount when we pay for the inventory, not when we record it in our books. So we'll ignore the purchase discount for the moment. And we're going to purchase $60,000 of inventory on account. Um, we're going to pay for it later. So we know that the credit is going to be to accounts payable in both of our systems. That is a known. We're putting the inventory onto our account. Now, the difference between the periodic and the perpetual is whether we record the debit or the recognition of inventory directly to the inventory account or whether it goes to a purchases account. So in the periodic system, we don't record um, journal entries directly to the inventory account. We're using different accounts like purchases or uh, product returns as separate accounts. So here we're going to have debit purchases. And for perpetual, everything goes directly to our inventory account. So it's nice and easy. So we know we're going to go debit inventory. And the amount for this is going to be $60,000 in both instances. Okay, so we got that done. Okay, so next, we also need to be careful that we don't miss this piece because it doesn't have a date. So presumably it's on July 1st. We're going to pay freight costs of $1,200. So freight costs, it says we paid it. So the credit in this case is going to be to cash in both instances because we paid the freight costs, didn't go into our account. And the debit, it's exactly the same here. So here our debit is going to go to inventory because we can capitalize freight costs. And here our debit is going to go to freight in. So again, periodic is just using different accounts for the different types of transactions as opposed to perpetual, where we record everything through the inventory account. Whoops, 1200. Okay. So then on July 3rd, Baby Bear is going to return damaged goods and we're going to receive a credit of 6,000. So let's record the entry for that, July 3rd. So we're going to receive a credit. So we're, we know we're going to debit accounts payable because we're decreasing the amount that we owe now because we're getting a credit. So that's the same in both cases. And again, here in the periodic system, we're going to use credit purchase, re purchase returns. And here we're going to go credit, you guessed it, inventory because we can't capitalize the goods that we're receiving. So we need to take it out of the amount that we've capitalized for inventory on our balance sheet. And this is gonna be 6,000.
Okay, and then our last entry in this question is going to be that we're going to actually pay for the goods. So we need to remember this piece up here. So did we pay for the goods in time to get this discount? So we paid for the goods on July 10th and we bought the goods on July 1st, so that's 10 days. And the discount here was 210 at 30. And 210 means 2% 2 if paid within 30 days. Otherwise, the entire balance is due within 30 days. That's what the net 30 means. So we did pay for the goods within 10 days. So we will get a 10% discount. So how do we record that? So first of all, this is gonna happen on July 10th. And so we know, okay, so let's think about what we need to do here. So we've got accounts payable on the books for this inventory. So clearly we need to clear out whatever we had in our accounts payable amount, in our accounts payable. Um, related to this inventory to clear out our books. So what do we have for accounts payable? Well, here we've got um, 60,000 and we're going to subtract 60,000. We're gonna subtract these different accounts. So ultimately we're gonna end up with 54,000 in accounts payable net. So you've got 6,000 and then we've got minus, sorry, 60,000 minus 6,000. So that's how we get the 54,000. Um, and then we are going to go credit cash. So we need to actually pay for these goods. That's what we're doing. But how much cash are we actually remitting? So we know we're not gonna remit the 54,000 because that's the face amount of the inventory. So we're gonna get a 2% a discount. So let's calculate that. So we're gonna say 54,000, which is the amount that we owe for the inventory net of our return times 98%. So that's going to, here, the reason we're using 98% is because we know we're getting a 2% discount. So this is going to give us 54, sorry, 52,980. So that's the amount of cash we're actually going to record, 52,980. And then the other piece, so now our journal entry doesn't balance. So what's the balancing piece? In a periodic system, because we're using different accounts, we're going to cause it. Purchase, we're going to call it purchase discounts, and that's the difference to balance, which is one zero eight zero. Now let's take a look at the uh, perpetual system. So we're still going to have the same fifty four thousand here, which is our sixty thousand less our return of the six thousand, and our cash is gonna be the same because we're getting the same discount, the 98% or the 2% discount. So we're still gonna have this exact same entry here for cash of 52,980. And then now the question is, how do we balance our account here? In the periodic system, we used a purchase discount account. And here we are going to balance it using inventory because everything goes directly into inventory. So we're gonna have this 1080 to inventory. So that outlines how Baby Bear would account for these transactions, um, many of which hit account payable, which is why this is coming up in chapter 13, using the two different types of, rec of accounting for inventory.